piercing shrieks of anguish fill the land. Childless and brokenhearted, they now sought to leave. But they were told they had forfeited their right and were given a choice between baptism or slavery. And after enduring all they did, after leaving their beloved Spain with all their wealth and ease, they were submitted to baptism now in the hope of being reunited with their children. Thousands were sold as slaves. Yet prior to being sold, they were submitted to tortures, cruelties, to revolting, to repulsive, to heartrending, to be here now. All Jewish children below 14 years of age were to be torn from their parents' arms or were beaten with clubs, dragged into a church and baptized. Those under three years of age were given to Christians to be raised as slaves. Those between three and 10 years of age were put on board of a ship and conveyed to the newly discovered unwholesome island of St. Thomas called the Highest Paradise or the Isles of Destruction. The Jews have experienced fully the unequal skill of the church in administering pain. Mothers cast themselves at the feet of the tyrants and pitifully begged to be taken with their babies. They were heartlessly thrust aside, hundreds of mothers, mad with despair, ran behind the ships as they carried off the idols of their heart and perished in the waves, the same fortitude with which the exiled people had borne so many. The Moors and Jews of Spain by Joseph Kroskoff Before Yahuwah smites the earth, there's a secret buried long, long ago, which is yet to be revealed, and it involves the Nigid, the royal house of King David.
Shalom fam, it's your brother Benaiah Ben Israel, coming to you with the lesson, The Niggit, Prince of the Exiles. That's The Niggit, Prince of the Exiles. And with that family, let's get started. Now, you may be wondering, okay, what's a niggit? Or you may be thinking, oh, I, I know what a niggit is. Matter of fact, I got two niggits in my neighborhood. <laughs> no, but seriously, fam, you may be surprised to know that a niggit is not what you think it is. In fact, a niggit can be found in your Bible. That's right. And it's associated with the house of Judah and it's associated with a people in exile. That's right, fam. The niggit traces back to Judah in exile. And with that, fam, let's take a closer look. And so let's begin our journey, as we often do, by reviewing the description of the tribe of Judah in archaeology. Let's recap our review of the Lakesh relief. Now, shortly after King Sennacherib of Assyria conquered the tribe of Judah's city called Lakish, the Assyrians created a stone monument or stone relief in which they depicted the tribe of Judah. Now, we pointed out in previous videos that this relief depicts the tribe of Judah as a Negroid people. Not only that, archaeology at the Lakish site confirms the people were a Negroid people labeling the entire population as egypto nubian aka black people now keep in mind this depiction of the tribe of judah was made around 701 bc then roughly 104 years later the king of babylon comes and takes the same negro people of judah to babylon and to spain according to the old references as the following reference reads and it reads king alonzo once we may learn if we can believe it that a king of spain who had assisted nebuchadnezzar in reducing jerusalem brought an enormous population into spain all from either the family of david or at least from the tribe of judah and that the royal family resided first in seville then in granada and that the exiles afterwards have their numbers greatly increased by fugitives from the desolation of the second temple and the next reference reads and it reads the spanish jews maintained that they had been transported hither after the destruction of the temple by the babylonian conqueror nebuchadnezzar certain jewish families the ibn Dawuds and the abarbanels boasted descendant from the royal house of judah and maintained that their ancestors had been settled since the time immemorial, partly in the district of Lucena and partly in the environs of Toledo and Seville. And the next reference reads and reads, but to come to rabbinical authors, Abarbanel in his commentary on Zechariah, the Lord also shall save the tents of Judah, affirms that at the desolation of the first temple, two families of the house of David came and settled in Spain, one at Lucina and the other, the Abarbanels, at Seville. And from these came a thousand offshoots. Not only were black, Spanish, and Portuguese brews brought to Spain during the time of Nebuchadnezzar and General Titus, we also see these Spanish brews referenced in the Bible by the Apostle Paul. As the following reference reads and reads, Romans chapter 15 verse 24 reads Whensoever I take my journey into Spain I will come to you for I trust to see you in my journey and to be brought on my way thither by you if first I be somewhat filled with your company Romans chapter 15 verse 28 When therefore I have performed this and have sealed to them this fruit I will come by you into Spain the Apostle Paul wasn't the only witness to these brews of Spain. We have additional evidence found in archaeology, cranial analysis, the study of skulls of the brews of Spain and Portugal. Their skulls were identified as doli cosophallic, or in other words, they had Negro skulls. As the following reference reads, and it reads, the Negroid type is primarily 
represented by the Negro of Africa. Between the Sahara and the Cape District, including Madagascar, the skin varies from dark brown to brown black, with eyes of similar dark hue, and hair usually black and always crisp or woolly. The skull is narrow, doly, gocephalic, with orbital ridges not prominent, pragnathus with depressed nasal bones cause the nose to be flat as well as broad, and the lips are coarse and projected. And the next reference reads and it reads, the Jews of Dagestan have even a cephalic index of 87.0. On the other hand, those of Africa and Syria have a purely doly cephalic head. And the next reference reads and it reads, the same variability occurs in other finds, but the skulls of most of the Sephardim, or Spanish and Portuguese Jews, are doly cosephalic. So fam, according to the Lakesh relief, the Bruce look like Negroes, they had woolly hair like Negroes, and based on the skulls, they had skulls like Negroes. In other words fam, they be Negroes. <laughs> you get the point fam. Now that that's out of the way, there's another important piece of history you need to know about fam, concerning these Negroes of Spain and Portugal. And for this, you may want to sit down. To begin, we turn to the book of Jeremiah, as we read about the fate of Jeconiah or Yekoniah, son of King Jehoiakim of Judah. The Most High Yah tells Jeremiah, the prince of Judah will be led away captive into Babylon. And the Most High tells Jeremiah what will happen to the prince of exile and his people. Let's begin with Jeremiah chapter 24 verses 1 through 6 and read about the vision the Most High Yah showed unto Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 24 verse 1 reads, And Yah showed me, and behold, two baskets of figs were set before the temple of Yah. After that, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had carried away captive Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and the princes of Judah, with the carpenters and the smiths from Jerusalem, and had brought them in Babylon. One basket had very good figs, even like the figs that are first ripe, and the other basket had very naughty figs, which could not be eaten, they were so bad. Then said Yah unto me, What seest thou, Jeremiah? And I said, Figs, the good figs very good, and the evil very evil, that cannot be eaten, they are so evil. Again, the word of Yah came unto me, saying, Thus says Yah, Alua of Israel, Like these good figs, so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive of Judah, whom I have sent out of this place into the land of the Chaldeans for their own good. For I will set mine eyes upon them for good, and I will bring them again to this land, and I will build them and not pull them down. I will plant them and not pluck them up. And so the Most High Yah foretold the Prince of Judah's captivity and eventual freedom from the Babylonian captivity. And so Jeconiah, son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, went into captivity. It's here we find an interesting connection with the Spanish and Portuguese Jews. You see, when we look at their lineage, which goes all the way back to King David, we see a forefather on their ancestry tree named Yekoniah. The prince who was carried away into captivity into Babylon. The people whom the Most High Yah call the good figs. The people whom the Most High said he would send into captivity for their own good. In other words, the people of Jeremiah chapter 24 verses 1 through 6 are literally the forefathers of the Spanish and Portuguese boobs. When the Bruce came out of Babylon, 
to rebuild Jerusalem, we again find another forefather of the Brews of Spain and Portugal. Nehemiah chapter 7, verse 6 through 7 reads, These are the children of the province that went up out of the captivity of those that had been carried away, whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had carried away, and came again to Jerusalem and to Judah, every one unto his city, who came with Zerubbabel, Yeshua, Nehemiah, Azariah, Ramiah, Nehemani, Mordecai, Belshan, Mespereth, Bigva, Nahum, Baniah. The number I say of the men of the people of Israel was this. You see, the brews of Spain and Portugal are the descendants, get this fam, of Zerubbabel as listed on their own lineage. That's right fam, the black, Spanish, and Portuguese brews are the brews of Nehemiah verse 7 verses 6 through 7. The very living descendants. These are the brews who were the first to return to Jerusalem to rebuild the city. These were the brews who came out of Babylon and returned to their homeland. Now, keep in mind, fam, the Limba also have an oral tradition of coming out of captivity from Babylon. Their ancestor is listed in Nehemiah chapter 7, verse 38, as Sinna. And if you're wondering, so why does your DNA closely match the DNA of the Limba? It's because your forefathers were there together. They are your brothers and sisters. <laughs> but wait, fam, there's more, much more. The lineage of the sons of Zerubbabel eventually gave rise to a descendant in Spain called Yahya, who eventually became a people called the Negro. That's right, fam, the descendants of Yekaniah son of King Jehoiakim, king of Judah, eventually became a people called the Negroes in Spain. Facts. And there's more. You see fam, before the Yayas moved to Spain and Portugal, we can find them in Babylon with a particular title. Members of these brews in exile were referred to as the head of the exile. They were called by the Hebrew words ha rosh gola, which means the head of the exile. As the following reference reads and reads, definition of Nasi, and Nasi is the Hebrew word for prince, and Nasi was another title for Yahya Negro. Now let's read the definition. It says Nasi, in the period under discussion, a member of the exilarch family, which means the princes in exile which claimed descent from King David. Let's drop down to where it says, Rosh Hagola, head of the diaspora, exilarch, right? Exilarch, princes in exile. You see fam, the Yayas in Spain were called Negroes, and they were also called Nasi, which is a Hebrew word meaning prince. As the reference states, they are a member of the Exilarch family or royal family in exile. And also note the term Rosh Hagola means head of the diaspora or Exilarch. In other words, the Yayas bore multiple titles, which meant princes or nobles in exile, such as Rosh Gola and Nasi. Let's take a look at the definition of the word Exilarch in the Webster Dictionary and it reads, Exilarch, one of a line of Jewish civil and judicial rulers of the exiles in Babylon from about the third to the 10th century to whom the Jews in all countries paid tribute. And now let's read the definition of the word Exilarch in the Jewish encyclopedia. And the following reference reads and reads, Exilarch, title given to the head of the Babylonian Jews who from the time of Babylonian exile were designated by the term Gola or Gullet. 
The chief of the Gola or prince of the exiles held a position of honor, which recognized by the state carried with it certain definite prerogatives and was hereditary in a family that traced its descent from the royal Davidic house or from the royal house of David. So as you can see, fam, the exilarchs were the head of the Jews in exile in Babylon. And as you'll read in the following references, they also moved to other countries where they served as exilarchs there as well. However, in those other countries, <laughs> they were called exilarch under a different name. Mm. However, before we read about these alternative names, let's look at the definition of Rosh Gola in the Strong's Concordance. So that's Rosh or Rosh, Strong's H7218. That's Strong's H7218. It means captain, chief, or head. And then there's Gola, which is H or Strong's H1473. That's Strong's H1473. Seven three, which means exile. See, fam, it was the prince of the Bruce, the descendants of Yekoniah, son of King Jehoiakim, who became known as Nasi, which means prince, who then became Rashgola, which means the head of the exiles. As the following reference reads, and it reads from Nasi to Rashgola. In fact, David pursued his aspirations to high office in a more gradual fashion. Between 1082 and 1089, documents call him merely Nasi or Davidic dynasty, which is after all what he was. Only beginning in 1085 was he called Laius, leader, not yet Reyes al Yahu. Although he seemed to have exercised Mavoric's prerogatives already, and had indeed usurped his office. Then in 1090 and 1091, David appears with the title Rosh Hagoli, head of the Dispora or Exilarch, a title that was meant to convey the status and privileges of the Rias al Yahu, that a leader from the venerable line of Exilarchs in Iraq was now the Egyptian Rosh Hagoli stood as yet another symbol of how the Iraqi center had transplanted itself onto Egyptian soil, but it was a transformation that had come about over the course of decades. The title of head of the diaspora changed over time and place. At one point in time, it was called Resh Golas. As the following reference reads and reads, the Babylonian title of the spiritual prince was Resh Gola, the head of the exile who got his title through hereditary election and endorsement by the Persian king. The rest Golas, or the Exilarchs, were far inferior to the spiritual princes of Palestine, although the former executed a more forcible power. Now, let's take a closer look at the title Rosh Hagola. Now, a closer look at the title Rosh Hagola reveals a shocking truth about these princes of exile or these exilarchs. The original title of the name for the prince of Judah was the word Neged. <laughs> That's right fam, Neged. N-E-G-I-D. It means prince. And the original title of the descendants of Yekoniah, son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, was Neged Hagola which means Prince of the Dispora. And better yet, in Spain and Portugal, in particular in Granada, they were simply called Neged Yisrael. That's Neged Yisrael. As the following reference reads, it reads, the original form of the title was Neged Hagola, Prince of the Dispora. Moses B. McVora bore, among others, four titles in which the word Naget occurs. The official title of Samuel of Granada was Neged Israel. Now note, in this reference, Rosh Hagola in Spain, or the Prince of the Exiles in Spain, was called Neged Israel, or Neged Yisrael. He was a Neged. He was a Neged. I know fam, it's a lot to take in. However, there's more. As the following 
reference reads and reads, the full title he used was Neged Hagola, Prince of the Dispora, the origins of the office of the head of the Jews. And the next reference reads and reads, Atta, the leader of the Jewish community to whom Hayaga on granted the title Neged Hagola in 1015. You see fam, the word Neged was spelled differently in different ways over the years. Neged was synonymous with the Hebrew word Naged, which also means prince. As the following reference reads and reads, it is uncertain whether there was a Naged named Mordecai. The expression Mordecai Hazemet is probably apparent, addresses him as Neged Amel, which is quite distinctive. His full name would then be Mordecai ben Harabiah. He was succeeded by Abu Manassar Samuel Hananiah, who was Naged at the time of Judah Haliva. He is not to be confused with Samuel Hanagat of Spain, as he is even in Sabari. And the next reference reads and reads, the title captain or Neged of God's people, commonly used of David. Wait, what? Just say that one more time. It reads, the title captain or Neged of God's people, commonly used of David. Is no! 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 Hold up, hold up, hold up. Wait, 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 wait. You trying to tell me that King David, granddaddy KD, was called Neged in the Bible. What? By the Most High. <laughs> the Most High called King David Neged or Naged in Hebrew? All right, <laughs> we gotta see this. Let's take a closer look. As we read in previous references, the word Naged is used interchangeably with the word Neged. The word Naged means prince, ruler, captain, or leader. And now let's read a few Bible verses which use the word Naged, AKA Niggit. 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 16 reads, Tomorrow about this time, I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin, and thou shalt anoint him to be Naged over my people Israel, that he may save my people out of the hand of the Philistines. For I have looked upon my people because their cry is come unto me. 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 1 reads, Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because Yahuwah has anointed thee to be Naged over his inheritance? 1 Samuel chapter 13 verse 14 reads, But now thy kingdom shall not continue. Yahuwah has sought him a man after his own heart. Yahuwah has commanded him to be Naged over his people because thou has not kept that which Yahuwah commanded thee. 1 Samuel chapter 25 verse 30 reads, And it shall come to pass when Yahuwah shall have done to my Lord according to all the good that he has spoken concerning thee, and shall have appointed thee Naged over Israel. 2 Samuel chapter 7 verse 8 reads, Now therefore so shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith Yahuwah Zabuot, I took thee from the sheep coat, from following the sheep, to be nagged over my people, over Israel. 1 Kings chapter 1 verse 35 reads, Then you shall come up after him, that he may come and sit upon my throne. For he shall be king in my stead, and I have appointed him to be nagged over Israel and over Judah. So you see fam, King David, along with other kings and princes in Judah and in Israel, were called Nuggets and they were called Niggets. All right fam, well let's get back to reviewing our references. And the next reference reads and reads, the title captain or Niggit of God's people, commonly used of David, is now applied to Hezekiah because he was David's true follower. The same acknowledgement of Hezekiah's faithful following of David 
appears in the expression, the God of David, thy father. And the next reference reads, Yehuda, Neged of the Aaronites. And the next reference reads and reads, New sources concerning the Nagets of Cairon and are missing. Nagat originally was not the name of an office, but an embrisement of a title, Nagat Hagola, the prince of the despoiler. In other words, fam, the Bruce used the word Nagat to replace the words Nagat Hagola, aka the prince of the despoiler. The word Nagat is a Hebrew word, Strong's 5057, meaning prince, ruler, a leader. And the next reference reads and reads, The Nagat of the people of God was saved from the snare of the fowler and the noisome pestilence. He was forced to go into exile in the province al Fuyu for an entire year and thereafter in Alexandria until the time that his word came to pass. You see fam, the people who were called Nagats or Nagats were the head of the exiled brew community of Judah. As the following reference reads and it reads, Nagat, the head of the Jewish community in Islamic countries. In the Middle Ages, beginning in the 10th century, there were Nagatim in Spain, Cairon, Egypt, and Yemen, in Morocco, Algeria, and Tunisia. There were Nagatim from the 16th to the 19th centuries. Now notice fam, the words Nagatim is simply the plural form of nigget. Now in the States, we would simply call them niggas. <laughs> this brings us to an important point, fam. The nigget or Rosh Hagola or Prince of the Exiles, they eventually moved to Spain and Portugal where they gave rise to the Yayas who then gave rise, you guessed it, to the Negroes. As the following reference reads and reads, the Exilarchs, the Rosh Gola or Exilarch or Prince of the Exiles was a hereditary position of honor tracing back to the royal house of David, Yahya. The two sons of the martyr Rosh Gola of Babylonia, Hezekiah, fled to Spain. They came under the protection of Yosef Hanagid bin Samuel. Skipping ahead, that is why upon his execution, his two sons sought refuge in Spain, a country where Jewish princes governed. Jews led armies in victorious military exports and Jewish learning was at a very high level. Skipping ahead, he lived for some time in Saragusa and was under the patronage of Samuel Hanagid. We have no further information concerning how he might be connected to the Yahya line, other than he is mentioned as a Yahya in Shalshalet al Kabbalah by Gedaliah ibn Yahya. Nor do we know the names of Hezekiah's two sons. They lived with Yosef Hadnagid in Granada until he was murdered in 1066. One brother then went to Saragusa where he married. His descendants became prominent in Aragon and surrounding areas. The other brother went north and then westward. The next name in his line that was confirmed is his son, Chaya which we can find on the lineage of Yahya listed as number 45. And the next reference reads and reads, The two sons of Hezekiah fled to Spain and gave rise to the Ibn Yahya family. Let's read a quick reference about Yahya, where it says he flourished in Lisbon in the 11th century and died about 1150. He was held in high esteem among the Jews, and King Alfonso I honored him for his courage. After the conquest in Santura, the king presented him with two country houses that had belonged to the Moors, wherefore he assumed the name Negro. And the next reference reads and reads, Yaya, a Portuguese family of the Middle Ages, members of which were prominent in Portugal, Spain, Italy, and Turkey. Certain individuals of the family bore the additional cognomen or last name, Negro, with reference to the Moors from whom several of their estates had been obtained. The more prominent members of the family are as follows. All right, then. So let's review what we've learned so far. We learned that Yekoniah, son of Jehoiakim, 
king of Judah, went into captivity in Babylon. There he and his descendants stayed until they left Babylon under the name and the lineage of Zerubbabel. This event, of course, is captured in the Bible. We also learn that the descendants of these exiles were called Rosh Hagola or Exilarch, meaning head of the exiles. Exilarch had to be from the line of King David. We also learn that these princes of exiles were also called Nigat. We pointed out Yahya was also called Prince or Nasi. We then reviewed the title of the Prince of the Exiles in Spain was Nigat Yisrael or Nigat Israel. We also learned that the sons of the Nigat Hezekiah fled into Spain and gave rise to the Yahyas and eventually the Negroes. I know fam, it's a lot to take in and most high willing, we will review additional information about the niggets who became slaves in a later video. However, before we close out this session, I'd like to leave you with the following reference, which describe the fate of the niggets or the princes of Judah in Spain. As the following reference reads and reads, whether from fancy or pride, it was supposed that the Spanish, or more correctly, the Sephardic Jews, were the posterior or the noblest tribe and included among them descendants in a direct line from King David. Hence the Jews looked upon them as a kind of Jewish nobility. And now these exalted ones had been visited by the severest affliction, exile, compulsory baptism, death in every hideous form by despair, hunger, pestilence, fire, shipwreck, all torments united had reduced their hundreds of thousands to barely the tenth part of that number. The remnant wandered about like specters, hunted from one country to another, and princes among Jews. They were compelled to knock as beggars at the doors of their brother. And with that fam, I bid you shalom.